And to Jesus be the praise for a glorious week. I pray you've had a wonderful Christmas and you are going to have a beautiful new year. Lord, I thank you for your people. And I thank you for giving us the greatest year ever. Lord, I believe this with all my heart. You sweet people agree with me right now. Lord, we believe with all our hearts that this will be the greatest year ever, ever. That all the losses will be restored in 2022 and your blessings will be mighty in 2022 in Jesus' glorious name. And God's people said, Amen and Amen. I'm so excited about teaching today on the gifts of the Holy Spirit and will continue tomorrow. But let's begin. And by the way, thank you for joining me. Thank you for being my wonderful family. So, uh, 1 Corinthians 12, beginning at verse 7. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Holy Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge, by the same Spirit, to another faith, by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing, by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But all these work at that one and self same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. Now, I want you to write something on a piece of paper, if you can, and write three headlines. Headline number one, put revelation gifts. Right next to it, write vocal gifts and then power gifts. Just kind of make like three separate, one line, one here, one here. And then under them, you're going to write what they are. So the first ones is Revelation Gifts. The second headline, Vocal Gifts. The third headline, Power Gifts. Now, the, Reve- the Revelation Gifts I'm going to teach on today. Tomorrow I'm going to cover the Vocal Gifts and Power Gifts. So let's talk about the Revelation Gifts. What are they? The Word of Wisdom. The Word of Knowledge and the discerning of spirits. So when, when we just read 1 Corinthians 12, 7 and, and, and on, we saw the gifts listed in their order. But to, to, to help us remember them, if you put them in three groups, you can remember them. So the vocal gifts first, uh, sorry, the revelation gifts first, and the revelation gifts are the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, Discerning of spirits. The the vocal gifts come second. What are the vocal gifts? The vocal gifts are tongues, interpretation of tongues, prophecy, things you speak. And then you have the power gifts. The power gifts are, what are they? Faith, healings, miracles. So on your list, you're going to write, under the revelation gifts, the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, Discerning of spirits, which we're going to cover today. In the center, under vocal gifts, you're going to write tongues, interpretation of tongues, prophecy. Then on the third list, you're going to write faith, healings, miracles. That's how you can remember the gift. So let's deal now, let's deal with the first group. And the first group is the word of wisdom. So what is the word of wisdom? The word of wisdom is the application of the word of God in the right place, for example. So it's the application of knowledge. Uh, When the Lord Jesus was tempted by the enemy, if we look at Luke chapter 4, for example, when the devil came and said, if you're the son of God, turn these stones into bread, He used the word to defeat him. That's called the word of wisdom. And he used the word and he said in verse 3 and on it says, it says, 
and the, and the devil said to him, if you be the son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. And Jesus said, answered him, it is written that men will not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. So that was the word of wisdom. He knew exactly what scripture to use to defeat him. That is called the word of wisdom. So the word of wisdom is knowing the Bible and knowing how to use it against your enemy. So the word of wisdom uh, will solve the problem. The word of wisdom will solve the problem. The word of knowledge reveals the problem. Okay? But the word of wisdom solves the problem. So when you face a temptation, you know the scripture to use to diffuse it, to remove it, to destroy it. And then he, he came again and said, now, if you're the son of God, uh, and he kept tempting the Lord, but in every case, the Lord used the scripture. So he says, if you will worship me, I'll, I'll give you the whole world. And the Lord exactly knew what to do. He used a scripture. You'll worship the Lord your God and only him will you serve. Now the devil is also smart. He can use scripture, but he uses it wrongfully. He said, why don't you cast yourself down, for it is written, he'll send his angels. And the Lord spoke, you'll not tempt the Lord your God. So the word of wisdom was, was used very powerfully in the life of the Lord. And you and I can use that same word of God wisely. That's what the Bible says. Have an answer. Have an answer. The problem is people don't, don't, don't know the word. Because you see, let me say something. It's very, very, very important. If we don't know the old covenant, we, we will be defeated. It's not enough just to know the New Testament. Jesus used the old covenant to defeat the devil. There was no New Testament written. And most, well, I shouldn't say most, a lot of Christians ignore the old covenant because they say, well, it's the Old Testament. No, no, no. It's the word of God. It's the full revelation of God. Without the old, the old covenant, you could not believe. You and I would not be able to believe the New Testament because it has no foundation and without the old. The old covenant gives the new covenant the foundation it needs. Because see, that's what, when you read Matthew, he says, for it was fulfilled that, because it was written. So here is the fulfillment. So the Old Testament the Old Testament in the new is revealed and the new in the old is concealed. Can I say it again? The New Testament in the old is concealed, so you have to search for it. But the old in the new is revealed. But back in the, in the days of the early church, they did not have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in any of the epistles. They, they had to find Jesus in the Old Covenant. So we need to know the full word of God, both old and new, to defeat the devil. And so Peter says, have an answer for your enemies. And we need the word of wisdom. The word of wisdom is the application of facts, the application of truth. So when they came in Matthew 22, verse 15 through 22, and, and they, they tempted the Lord. They came to tempt him. If you remember this most remarkable uh, account in the Bible, let me just read it to you. So let's go to Matthew 22, and let's look at verse 15. And here is what it says. So it says, Then when the Pharisees and took counsel how they might entangle him in his talk, and they sent to him their disciples and so on, and they said, now tell us, in verse 17, what do you think? Is it lawful to give tribute to Caesar or not? But the Lord perceived their wickedness and said, why do you tempt me? Show me the tribute money. And they did. And he said, render unto God what belongs to God and to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. How did he know to say it? Because it's in the Old Covenant. Because Moses had written that they need to pay temple tax. They need to pay their taxes. So the Lord knew, yes, pay tax, it belongs to Caesar. So whatever belongs to God, give it to God. Whatever belongs to Caesar, belongs to, uh, give it to Caesar. And he 
destroyed their, 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 their attack, really. He was gone. He went into nothing. So the word of wisdom, the Bible tells us, and, and you, do you remember also in Acts 23, Paul the, the apostle using it, when he realized there were Pharisees and Sadducees, and he used the scripture to literally save himself. So it's quite an amazing uh, truth here. Now, Ephesians 1.17 says it comes by prayer. So we have to pray for the word of wisdom because in, in Ephesians 1, Paul said, Paul said that he prayed that the church would receive wisdom. Remember that? So let's look at it. Ephesians 1.17, here's what Paul said, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. So that gift comes by prayer. Now let's talk about the word of knowledge. The word of knowledge is revealing a problem. The word of wisdom is solving a problem. The word of knowledge is revealing a problem. That is specific information given by the Holy Spirit concerning a need or a problem. In Acts chapter 5, we see this gift at work quite powerfully, in fact. And I want to explain something to you in just a second that's going to really, really help you. So in Acts chapter 5, I'm going to read verse 3. And Peter said, Ananias, why hath Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost, to keep back part of the price of the land. He knew by the Holy Spirit that Ananias and Sapphira lied. Now, that gift, that gift, I've experienced it many times. And I want to explain it to you as best as, best as I could. In Romans 8, verse 16, it talks about it. So Paul writes about that in verse 16 of Romans chapter 8. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit. It's the witness of the Spirit. Now, what is the witness of the Spirit? It's in Hosea. Hosea chapter 12 talks about the witness of the Spirit because God in Hosea 12, talked about this when he said in verse 10, I have also spoken by the prophets. This is verse 10, Hosea 12. I have multiplied visions and I use similitudes. What are similitudes? Impressions. Um, The Bible calls them similitudes. It's the It's where spiritually, not mentally, not mentally, spiritually, you know something deeper than the mind can go. It's a knowing beyond knowing. It's a knowing so deep you can't shake it off. It's called similitudes. Have you ever been on the highway? and you sense danger ahead and get, got off the highway, that's called similitudes, in impression. Something you know and you don't know how you know. You just know. You sense danger before the danger comes and you get out of the way. You are about to get in a car and uh, you sense, uh-uh, not now. You're about to get on a plane I will never forget, I was about to fly on a private plane years ago. I got to the airport and uh, I said to my guys, I'm not getting on. And Henry, my brother, was w- with me. He said, ah, it's only your mind. He said, I'm not, I'm not going on this plane. And there was nothing wrong. In the natural, everything was just fine. The pilot comes out, Captain Dan was his name. He said, why aren't you coming on? I said, I'm not. And he said, well, everything is fine. We're we're, going to fly. Not me. 
So I went back in the car. Everybody was saying, he's lost his mind. The guys who came with me came, they had no choice. My brother and some of the other staff went on believing it's all fine. And I said, no, I said, I'll, I'll just, you know, not want to get on. And within minutes, well, they took off, the air lost the pressure, and the masks came down, and they had to come back and land. Wow. And they all were freaking out. How did you know? How did you know? I said, I cannot explain how I knew. I'm on a boat 40 miles off from Ormond Beach. A guy in our church in Orlando wanted to take us fishing. We come out of the harbor, we're 40 miles in, and I start screaming, get back now to land, get back to shore now. All my brothers were there, Willie, Sam, Chris, Henry. They got really upset with me. They said, well, we, we just got it. We want to go fishing. I said, uh-uh, you've got to get, get back to land. And I began screaming. I really got very, very bold. And the man who was the owner was very, a very gracious man from Italy. He was Italian living in Florida. And they were all just so upset with me, except him. He goes back to shore. Everybody's still upset. You ruined our day. We, 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 why are you like that? We will never take you with us again, all that stuff. And an hour later, that boat was underwater. And the guy called me, the owner said, how did you know, how did you know? I said, no, what? He said, we would have been killed, we would have drowned had you not told us to get back to land. As they were going out of the harbor, we all heard a little crack, but nobody paid attention. He hit something underneath. And, the, and he said the boat was sticking in water the whole time we were going. And an hour later, when we got back, an hour after, it was gone. How did I know? I can't explain that. Father, in Jesus' name, give them that. Yes. You, come on, lift your hands and, because you need it. It could save your life. And you too yes, there. Lord, in Jesus, give them that. Yes, Lord, I don't know how it, it works. Only you know how it works. But give that to your people, Lord, that they will be saved from danger in Jesus' name. It's an impression. It's an impression. It's something you know deep. And the Bible calls it similitude. It's almost like, no, no, you don't say anything mentally. If, if you depend on your mind, you're lost. If you depend on your mind, you're going to fail in this. There are times on that platform when I know so deep something, I don't, I can't shake it off. It's not mental. It's way more powerful than mental. That's the word of knowledge, and every believer can have that. Because Paul the apostle had all gifts. Paul had all gifts. Now, and I don't have time to show it to you, but if you read the New Testament, the epistles, you'll see he had every gift. All the nine gifts were in his life. So the Bible says, seek after the best gifts in your life. Now, number three, discerning of spirits. This is a very amazing one because discerning of spirits is the supernatural ability given by God, by the Holy Spirit, to detect or to perceive the source of a spiritual manifestation. Whether that manifestation comes from the Lord, whether that manifestation comes from the spirit of man, or whether it comes from the demon spirit. So let's look at Acts chapter 10. So in Acts chapter 10, we see something really amazing. We see Peter perceiving the Holy Spirit through Cornelius, which was not possible in the natural. Here, here he is as a Jew, taught all of his life, never talked to Gentiles, never associates with Gentiles. And now he goes to Caesarea and he realizes for the, for the first time that this is God when all his life he would have never believed God would ever speak to a Gentile or God would ever visit a Gentile. And his first words after... Uh, Cornelius says, an, an angel appeared to me and said to call you. 
Watch verse 24. Peter opened his mouth and said, of a truth I perceive. I perceive. What was he perceiving? He was perceiving it's the Holy Spirit. He said, I perceive that God is no respecter of person. In every nation, he that fears him and works righteousness is accepted. So there Peter perceived the Holy Spirit when in the natural it was impossible to perceive God in the Gentile, the life of the... the, Because even Jesus said to them before the cross, don't go to the Gentiles. Don't go to the Samaritans. Now, after the cross, the Lord said, go into all the world. But somehow, I don't think they really heard him right. Because Jesus said in Matthew 20, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. They're thinking, go to the world and preach to, to, to the Jews only. To the Jews only. Even when when the Lord in, in the book of Acts says, ye shall receive power and be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, and the world, I think they were just thinking Jewish world. Now God comes to Peter in my hometown, Jaffa, a block away from where I was born, the house of Simon the Tanner, and God shows him a vision with animals, and he says, no, no, not, not me, Lord, I, you know, I don't touch any, anything unclean. And God says, don't you call unclean what I've cleansed. <laughs> I have Jeff with me, Ferguson, my dear friend. We're working on a great book together on the anointing. Well, now, you know, Peter is questioning, and the Holy Ghost has to say, Doubting nothing. Don't question it. I'm, I've sent these men. He goes to, to Caesarea a whole day, 24 hours walk, basically. And he gets into the house of Cornelius. And as Cornelius is speaking, he says, I perceive God. That's the discerning of spirits. Now watch something amazing. In Acts chapter 8, he perceives the spirit of man. Because in verse 18, it talks about Simon the sorcerer. Well, Simon says, give me the gift. He tries to buy the gift and says, so I can lay hands on people and they'll receive the Holy Spirit. And Peter rebukes him and and says in verse 20, your money perish with you because you you, you thought you can buy it, repent. And then he said this, watch this. For I perceive, verse 23, he was perceiving the human spirit. For I perceive that you are in the gall of bitterness and the bond of iniquity. I perceive bitterness and iniquity in you. He was able to perceive the human spirit. Then in Acts 16, this is the most amazing one of all in my opinion, where a woman was speaking truth, a woman was speaking truth, and Paul perceived the demon. Therefore, speaking truth does not guarantee it's from God. Right. Because you you think about Cornelius, Cornelius could, could, could have been lying to, to Peter, because as a Gentile. But Peter knew it was truth. Now here's a woman in Acts 16 and verse 16, where she's going about, and it says, and it came to pass, this is Acts 16, 16, as we went to prayer, a certain, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us which brought her masters much gain by witchcraft, soothsaying. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Lord, uh, sorry, the servants of the Most High God. That's the truth. Which show unto us the way of salvation. She was telling the truth. And it says, and she did this for many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee, in the name of Jesus Christ, come out of her. Now, how did he know it was the demon spirit who was speaking truth through this lady? Discerning of spirits. So here, the discerning of spirits, the the reason for it is to protect. It's to guard our life as believers. And it's not mind reading. It's discerning of spirits. What spirit is talking to you? Is it God, like through Cornelius? Is it man, Simon the sorcerer? Or is it the demon, that woman? No. Now, it's time we understand that we need that gift more than ever before. 
I want you to lift your hands to heaven and ask God to give it to you because the Bible tells us to pray for those gifts. Pray that God will give you the gifts of the Spirit. Father, in the name of Jesus, give them the gifts of the Spirit today, Lord. Lord, I pray every one of them will have today, today, the word of wisdom. Today, the word of knowledge. Today, the discerning of spirits. Lord Jesus, give your people now, now, the gifts of the Spirit. All the gifts of the Spirit. Let them begin to operate in their life. I give you the glory. I give you the honor and the praise, Lord. Meet their needs and, Lord, give them the gifts of the Spirit and let the gift of wisdom today operate. Let the gift of the word of knowledge operate. Let the gift of discerning of spirits operate today, Lord. Let all the gifts come to life in Jesus' holy name. I give you praise. Tomorrow, as I begin to teach on tongues, the interpretation of tongues and prophecy, tomorrow's teaching will be a little bit longer because I want to finish all of it. I want to say something here that I'm going to repeat tomorrow. Tongues is what is the is the key that turns the engine on. Think about this: that the gifts of the spirit are the engine. The fuel is the Bible. The fuel is the Bible. The engine is the gifts, but the gift of tongues is the key that turns the engine on. Whenever you pray in tongues, you ignite all the gifts. So we'll talk about that tomorrow. It's very important. I think that's why Paul said, I pray in tongues more than you all, because praying in tongues ignites the word of wisdom, ignites word of knowledge, ignites discerning of spirits, ignites interpretation and prophecy, ignites faith and healings and miracles. It ignites all that. When, when I would go to, Ms. to Catherine Woman, I would always notice her. She was always praying quietly and we didn't know she was praying in tongues at the time because she was not, you know, loud. I prayed in tongues and still do to this day when I minister all the time. Nobody can hear me because I'm praying under my breath sometimes. Very, very fast, in fact, at times. Lord, I give you praise for your wonderful word. Bless your people today, Lord, and expand their knowledge on the gifts of the Spirit. In Jesus' holy name, give them the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Now, Lord, meet their needs financially. Yes. People of God, lift your hands and receive. Meet their needs financially, Lord. That 2022 will be a year of restoration, a year of abundance, a year with no lack whatsoever. In Jesus' name. I had a dream last night. I had a dream last night. I dreamt I was with a lot of young people. They were everywhere. They were out in the doorways, everywhere. There was a young man, thin with a beard. I don't know who he is. I never saw him in my life. And he was singing a song about restoring the anointing. I woke up this morning. I woke up this morning with a song in my in my in my mind. Chad, it was incredible this morning. And I woke up with restore the anointing, Lord, restore the anointing. And the young people were intensely hungry. It was like a packed place. And I was ministering to them. And the cry came out of that young man who seemed to be like a, a psalmist, very beautiful voice, very anointed crying of the Lord restore and I woke up with it. I believe we're going to see that in 2022. I, I just ministered at my children's conference, Jesus 21. Thousands came, thousands. That was, a, that was way bigger than last year. Oh, the glory of God that was there as I ministered was incredible. I'm telling you people, we are, we're going to see a move on our youth we have not seen before. And I want to ask you to pray for your children, pray for your young people. And we're going to have a blessed year financially. We're going to have a blessed, blessed year financially in an amazing way. But we have to give in order to qualify for the harvest. 
So I'm going to ask you to give right now. That God will bless you. That he'll bless 2022 with an amazing beginning. A glorious beginning. Don't worry about what the world is saying right now. We don't care. There'll be a glorious beginning for the church. For you. For your people. For your, for your family. So you have to sow seed now and say, Lord, I sow an expectation that 2022 will be a year of harvest in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you can give by sowing your seed to Benny Hinn Ministries, or either on the platform you're watching me on, or go to bennyhinn.org, our website, or simply text BHM45777 and tell your friends about helping me build our YouTube channel. It is exploding. It's growing big. So make sure to tell your friends and thank you for watching me on all the other platforms on Facebook and the other platforms. And I'm so grateful that we can be on, you know. So, but help me build my YouTube channel too. Much love to you. Bye-bye.